Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 28th of October 2019 and the time has just gone 10.05 GMT. Uh, it's been a fairly uh, subdued se session here uh, in Europe. Uh, broadly speaking, European equity markets are a bit lower. Uh, the DAX is clinging on to positive ground, uh, but by and large we're looking uh, I think things are a bit lower. Uh, the big news this this morning has been that the the European Union has agreed to uh, get to do to to grant the the UK a, th a three month extension to for leaving the European Union. So that, you know it's looking quite likely that Brexit is going to be delayed by three months until the end of January 2020. And this has been kind of going around. There's been, there's been talk with this for the last few days. So it's been no real uh, it's been no, no real surprise. Um, but politics is going to remain very much in focus for the rest of the trading day and indeed the, uh, the week, depending on how things play out. Uh, later today, uh, Boris Johnson is hoping to get hoping to get approval uh, by his fellow MPs for the hold a general election on the 12th of December. Now he would need to get a two-thirds majority uh, in the House of Commons to, to to get approval, and that, and that isn't looking too likely, seeing as that the senior members of the Labour Party have already come out and said. They're not going to back it unless the no deal possibility is, is taken off the table, and that is something that can't or, or won't be or won't uh, won't, won't be um, committed to by by Mr. Johnson. But there's, uh, but away from that, uh, there's talk of a bill being put forward by the SNP and the Liberal Democrats, the other op smaller opposition parties, who are trying to, to just p um, put a bill forward just 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 so actually you, you you would only require a simple majority in the House of Commons. To actually uh, look to, to press press ahead for a general election, and and the date that they're thinking about is December 9th. Um, so that, that keep an eye on that in terms of how things are going to play out in domestic politics. Also, what's going on at the back end of last week, we heard from a U.S. trade representative that there there is quote unquote headway being made uh, between the U.S. and China when it comes to trade, uh, and sources say that things are looking like. We're not too far away from kind of phase one of the kind of trade deal being completed. So that's that's um, that's been uh, something that's been going on um, in, in in the financial markets. Not to mention, of course, a reporting season here in Europe and over in the US is continue to continue to go along. So I'll take a look now at some of the uh, at the week ahead article, some of the major stories. Uh, the week ahead article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com under news under insights, you'll find the news and analysis section. And you can find the article here. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have third quarter figures from BP. Um, on Wednesday, we have the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. On Wednesday, we have US GDP, uh, and we also have the, the Federal Reserve meeting. <coughs> uh, Wednesday, we also have the fourth quarter figures from Apple. We have third quarter figures from Facebook. Uh, on Thursday, we have the Bank of Japan meeting. We also have uh, third quarter numbers from Lloyd's on Thursday morning. And on Friday, we have the all-important um, U.S. manufacturing, uh, apologies, U.S. jobs report, the non-farm payroll support. And then also we, we have a, a raft of, um, of manufacturing figures, uh, PMI reports um, from a number of major European economies coming out during the week as well. So I'll start, I'll start off now with the FTSE 100. And uh, and uh, continue on as, like some of the major indices, some of the major currency pairs, and finally some commodities. So if we take a look at the price action, the FTSE. Basically, for the month of October, we've seen a fairly decent move to the upside in the FTSE. Uh, we can see that this 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 line here, the water to moving average, which comes into play at 73.35, is actually it's fairly decent resistance. Um, the market has struggled to, to break above it on a few occasions, but the, the wider trend for the past month or so is still very much in play. And if we do manage to break above this level here, we could see the, the, the highs achieved in late September in around 7,440, or up to this zone here, um, 7,470. This area being targeted um, as the next potential area of resistance should we move on higher from here. If, on the other hand, the market does manage to uh, to move lower, support could be found from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 72.40. We can see on a few occasions that metric acted as a uh, support and or resistance, uh, and acted as resistance on a few occasions not long ago. So it's quite possible 
that old resistance could become new support. Well, obviously, there are no guarantees, though. Start take a look now at the um, the Germany 30, the DAX. So last week, well, actually, even today, we saw a level being achieved in the DAX that hasn't been achieved since June last year. So we're looking over over a year high. So give you an indication of how, how how strong things are over the Germany 30. The market's in a solid upward trend. We're currently trading at 12,925. If the kind of wider upward trend does continue, we could be looking at targeting the kind of psychologically important uh, 13,000 13, number. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here in a 13,200. But I will say is this though. So price action is, is key. Price sales is, is by, by far the most important indicator. But it's just, it's just worth noting that if you take a look at the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator, we can see that momentum is still positive, but it's slightly tapering off. And it's a bit concerning when you see the price action moving higher and higher and higher on lower momentum. It would suggest that the buyers are in control, but it would seem that they're running out of steam. So that might lead to the market actually uh, uh, moving a bit lower. And should that, that be the case, support could be found from this area here in around 12,800. And a move below that could take us back down toward this zone here, 12,660 down to 12,600. Take a look what's going over on in the US. So we're, we're currently expecting the Dow Jones once trading it's underway to currently expecting it to open north of the psychologically important 27,000 mark. So we're still very much in the kind of upper trend. The market's been moving steadily higher throughout the, the month of October. We're still in the uh, in the upper trend. And if you do manage to continue in the upper trend, uh, we could be looking at a, a retest in this area here in around 27,125, there thereabouts. The, uh, the mid October highs, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this zone here um, in around 27,300, which would be the mid September highs. And if you take that out, then we, we, we wouldn't be too far away from the all time highs that were up, up here in around 27,400. If you do have any uh, pullbacks in, uh, in the Dow Jones, support could be found for this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, and that comes into play at 26,653. We can see on a few occasions that that metric acts as support in the past, so it makes it more likely uh, it will act as support in the future, but obviously there are no guarantees. Uh, if you do have a very sizable uh, move to the downside in the Dow Jones, support can be found from this red line here, which is the eternity movie average, and that comes to play just south of 26,200. We can see that that, that, that metric acted as support back in uh, May and October, so it's possible it might act as support again. We should now take a look at the S&P 500, and we're calling the S&P 500 a bit, a bit lower um, today. But keep in mind, on Friday, the intraday high of the S&P 500 managed to take out the uh, the record close high. Uh, so give indication just how bullish things are. We're not a million miles away from the all-time intraday high on the S&P 500, so things are looking quite positive. And if you manage to kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting. Um, 3,028, 3,030, and then if you go beyond that, you know, we're in uncharted, we would be in uncharted territory, so we could be looking at numbers like 3,040, 3,050, so on and so forth. Any moves to the downside could find some support from this region here, the kind of psychologically important 3,000 mark. Uh, if we move below, below that, this blue line here might act as support, and that is the fifth of the moving average, and that comes to the play. Um, well, at uh, 2,957. Take a look now what's going on over the currency markets. So we saw here that at the beginning of the month, beginning of October, we saw a very uh, decent rebound in the, in the euro versus the US dollar. It's still in the kind of wider upward trend of the past month or so, although we have seen a bit of a pullback. Essentially, if you can hold above the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, and that comes into play in, a, in at um, 110.35, if you can hold above that metric, it's likely that the kind of the more recent, say, four-week-old four upward trend could continue. Uh, and we could look at a retest in this area here, this red line, which comes into play in, in, in at one spot 12. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the early August highs of in at one spot 12.49. 
if on the other hand the market does manage to press on lower and we, and we do drop have a, have a break below the 50 moving average we could be looking heading back down towards the say uh, one spot 10 zone down around here and a move below that and, and it could be a sign that they get a wider negative mood is making a move is still uh, is still intact and we could be looking heading heading back down towards sub 109 uh, retesting the uh, early october lows I'll take a look now what's going on on the British pound versus the US dollar. It's slightly higher today. Um, like I said, there was a lot of talk about the EU granting an extension to the UK to leave the European Union in, in late January 2020, and that, that has been confirmed. So if you take a look at the price actions uh, since September, we've had a very impressive move to the upside in the British pound versus the US dollar. And uh, only last, only recently we've hit levels that were, basically set, basically, that, were that were five months high. Uh, and, and the pound versus the dollar <clears throat> so the upper trend is still very much in play um, but I'm just ever so slightly concerned at which the, at the rate at which particularly from mid October onwards at the rate at which the British pound shot up um, when you see a move a gradient this steep it's not you know it's can be followed by a bit of a correction and then a continuation of the of the of the trend but in a, at a slower pace um, we have seen that the lows of today are still off the lows of the past couple of days, so that does bode well for the rally. And if you continue to kind of hold above the uh, last week, you know, the, 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 the low on Thursday, in just um, sub 1 spot 28, if you can hold above the kind of 128 metric, we could be looking at a retest in the kind of 130 area. And if you go beyond that, we, we could then be looking at t testing the early May high in at 1 spot 3178. Uh, if you do have a fairly sizable break to the downside, we could be looking at uh, retesting this this red line here in at one spot 27.14, and a move below that could take us back down towards one spot 26. Take a look now. What's going on um, on the commodities market? Starting off with the uh, with the gold market. So gold had a massive rally for quite a few months. Uh, had a six-year high in September. So clearly quite bullish. And then we had it, the lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high. So for a while their goal was looking that we could be looking at uh, moving lower yet again. But notice how the lows of mid-October uh, are firmly above the lows of early October. And we actually were managed to actually trade back above the 50 day moving average. So it looks like at the, the, kind of the lower low, the lower high, the lower low, and the, and the lower high. It looks like that that, that potential kind of negative move uh, has come to an end and we could look to continue the wider upward trend that's in play so if you do look the if you can hold up, continue to hold above the 50 day moving average in around 1505 if you can hold above that we could look at retesting this area here at 1520 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at targeting the late September high at around 1535 and then if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting uh, the high of, uh, high of September in around 15.57. If, on the other hand, the market, market does drop, drop back below 1,500, we could be looking at testing this zone here in around 14.75, 14.80. And we'd really need to be taking out the uh, this low here, the low in around kind of 14.59, 14.60 in early October to then become more confident that the market actually you know, is going to be heading lower. And if you do take off the early October low, we could be looking heading back down towards this zone here in around 14.53-14.30. And lastly now, I'll turn my attention to the oil market, starting off with Brent crude. So obviously, so after I had a move, sharp move to the upside in mid-September in the wake of the Saudi drone attacks, Followed by Saudi Arabia pledging and then filling on their pledge to getting back to production. So we saw a major move to the downside in the oil market. But since then, we've been pushing higher. And if, while we hold above this trend line here, and actually we're out back above the 50 day moving average, this blue line here, in a, a 60 spot 95, while we hold above that, it's likely we could see further ground being, being made in the oil market. And we could be looking at heading back up toward this red line here. The 50 moving average, which comes to play at 64 spot 79, and I move beyond that, could take us to this area here at 65 spot 79. It's only really if you have a kind of a slice of break back below this trend line, which comes into play in around say 59 spot 50, could then we, we, could then we, th could then we think, oh wait, maybe the negative trend um, 
for the last number of months is actually kicking back in again. And if that is the case, we could be looking at then retesting the, er the early October lows in around 56 spot 71. I'll take a look now at what's going on on WTI before I wrap things up. WTI, as you can see, a fairly similar move. The market has been pushing higher um, basically since early October. It's also holding comfortably above its 50 day moving average, this blue line here, in a 55 spot 42. And if you compress on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this zone here in around $58 a barrel. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at testing the kind of big psychological number of 60 bucks per barrel. If, on the other hand, though, the market does drop back below the 50 day moving average, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in round 54 or down toward this back toward this trend line here in round 52.60. And similar to what I said in WTI on Brent, it's only if really if you have a size of break below this trend line, because then we, we think maybe the kind of wider bearish trend is in play, back in play. And if that is the case, we could be looking at targeting the early early October low in around um, in around $51 per barrel. Uh, well, that's all for me this week. Um, Please tune in next week. Thank you very much.